Hey Reader Fan, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, opinions, and feels on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Parts 1 and 2 by J.K. Rowling and Jack Thorne. I just want to start this off by saying that we're all allowed to have our own opinions. My opinion should not affect your opinion. You're welcome to disagree with me, and you're also welcome to agree with me. With that being said, I did not hate this book, but I also didn't love this book, unfortunately. I encourage you to go into this book open-minded. Don't go into it with any expectations. I would say just give it a chance it might surprise you. I just want to say that before I get deeper into my review that there will be mild spoilers for this book. So if you don't want to know anything about this book going into it, which is how I think this book should be read, then shufla, go read the book and then come back and discuss with me. Let's first talk about the format of this book because this format was obviously different than the rest of the Harry Potter series. It's in script format and I didn't hate it. I was actually okay with it. It obviously wasn't up to par with the rest of the Harry Potter series. I mean, J.K. Rowling's writing is pretty untouchable, but I didn't go into this book expecting to have her same writing style from the rest of the series. I knew it was going to be different because of this format. It did make for a super fast read and I really liked that about it. You could probably read this book in one sitting. I wasn't able to though because I had to take break. I just needed to like set the book down and take a deep breath because the things that happen in this book are just madness. A great thing about the format though is that you already know the world so you don't really have to have like different details to make you visualize things. You can just go off the information that you know from the books so you don't have to build up this world in your mind again. You're already familiar with it. One of the main issues that I did have with this book is that a lot of the characters just felt so off to me and I've been trying to make up excuses for why that is and one of the things that I did come up with is that we have this 19 year gap that we don't see these characters. We don't know what happened to these characters from the end of the war with Voldemort all the way up to them dropping off their kids at King's Cross. We have no idea what went on during that time and that could be why it's so hard to read this and just have all the characters just feel a little bit off because they've changed. We just didn't get to see that change. But I also just wasn't a huge fan of the plot. It just felt a little bit lackluster to me and I hate saying that but that's just how I feel y'all. But maybe it's also because I was expecting something super epic from this story because I mean the freaking Harry Potter series is freaking epic so I was expecting something freaking epic from this book but it also just felt like the plot was super convenient. Things just worked themselves out a little bit too nicely. I did still enjoy this book though. I feel like I'm being really negative. There were things that I loved within this story. I loved the character character Scorpius. He was such a great addition to this world. I'm so happy that we have Scorpius. And I loved the friendship that Scorpius and Albus had. It was also just so great revisiting this world. And it made me want to just go back and reread the series because I miss this world and I miss these characters. This book just gave me so many nostalgic vibes. Overall though, like I said, I did enjoy this book. It wasn't perfect, but I still had a good time reading it. And I hope that one day I am able to see the play because I'm sure it's amazing. I'm now going to be jumping into a full on spoilery section because I want to talk about things that happened throughout this story. So if you have not read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, you should go read it and then come back and discuss with me. If you have read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, let's discuss the madness of this book because it was madness. Let's talk Cursed Child. Let's talk about the Cursed Child. Did anybody else just get consumed with feelings when you opened up the book and you realized that the book started at King's Cross where Deathly Hallows had ended? I was just like, oh my gosh, feelings all over the place. I loved hearing how Rose's biggest concern with going to school is if she'll break the Quidditch scoring record in her first year and how early she can take her owls. Someone is taking after her parents. And by parents, I mostly mean Hermione. And I believe her name is Rose Weasley. Did anybody else feel like immediately bad for Scorpius? He's going to school and everybody has like these expectations of him that he's going to be this evil person and they're not even giving him a chance. They're just like, oh, you're a Malfoy. You're bad news. I'm staying away from you. And this rumor, when I heard about this rumor, I'm just like, if this is true, I will lose my chill. Like, just think if they sent Astoria back in time to get it on with Baldi. I just, I can't, I can't. That rumor, it just got me. I was like, there's no way that he is the child of Voldemort. Like, this can't be real. This can't be real. How twisted would that be? It was really interesting seeing how much Albus resented being Harry's son. He gets in Slytherin and he just feels like he's not living up to his father's name and he's just not succeeding like his father did. I almost wonder if I would feel the same way too though because there is a lot of pressure with being Harry Potter's son. I feel like people probably hold these high standards because he is Harry's son, but like, that's not 
not fair to him at all. I feel like that's kind of why Albus and Scorpius bonded and became such close friends is because they both came into the school with people putting these expectations on them and expecting them to be like their fathers when they're not like their fathers at all. I was so upset by the relationship that we see between Harry and Albus and I was more so upset at Harry than Albus because Albus has a lot of pressure on him. He's trying to figure out where he fits in this world and he's really young and he's still trying to figure himself out. Harry on the other hand inexcusable. I do feel like there were times when Harry was like reaching out to his son and was like trying to better the relationship and Albus was just like putting up a wall and not having it. But I also feel like Harry wasn't good at disciplining his son and like being like no you don't treat me that way I am your father. He just kind of lets Albus be demeaning and like say all these terrible things to him. I was just completely shocked when Albus said I wish you weren't my dad. I lost it. I was like what am I reading right now? You did not just say that to your father. I guess this is kind of where a little bit of my issue comes with this script format. Like I said, I really liked the script format. I don't feel like it took too much away from the story, other than the fact that we don't really get to see what's going on in their minds, the internal struggles that they're facing. But then we have Harry come back saying, I wish you weren't my son. What is going on? What is going on? That is not the Harry Potter that I know and love. Harry Potter would not say that. I wanted to shake some sense into both of them and make them sit in time out and think about what they've said and then ship them off to a deserted island where they'll have to learn to survive together. I just literally couldn't wrap my mind around the scene and it just felt so off. I feel like Harry Potter would never say that to his son. I sort of loved seeing Albus and Scorpius kind of getting into some trouble together. They were escaping the Hogwarts Express and the trolley witch shows up up and she's like heck no techno and tries to put them in their place. I wasn't expecting her to be so hardcore but I loved it. She just seems like a regular little old witch but no she's a boss. Either way the boys end up jumping off the train and escaping. So we have this ministry meeting and they bring up the fact that Harry Scar has started to hurt again and how that's a sign that Voldemort might be back and at this point I'm just like no we are done with Voldemort. We ended Voldemort 19 years ago. Let's just leave that in the past, y'all. Let's leave that in the past. I don't want Voldemort back. I'm done with that storyline. Draco felt weirdly suspicious during that meeting. I don't know if anybody else felt that way. Harry and Hermione were just asking simple questions without judgment, and he's just outraged by every question they're asking him. I'm just like, Draco, chill. You're making yourself look super suspicious. And I guess it is because of that rumor, but the way he was acting was not helping at all. And I guess that is kind of true to his character. He does get outraged by simple things. So Scorpius, Albus, and Delphi team up together to try to get the time turner. And I really want to see how they do the polyjuice potion on stage. That's something that I would really like to see is just how they do all the magic throughout the story on the stage. Like I'm really interested to see how that all works out. Another moment where I feel like Harry is just so out of character is when he opens up to Draco how he told Albus he wished he wasn't his father. I feel like they don't really have that kind of relationship where Harry would share things like that. It just felt really off to me. I died at the scene when Albus was brawn and he's like blocking Hermione trying to get into her office and his defense mechanism is saying let's have another baby and then he kisses Hermione and I'm just like cringe cringe cringe. Albus just kissed his aunt. So weird, so uncomfortable, cringe. So they get the time turner, they go back in time and they mess with Cedric Diggory and they return. And at first I was like, oh, nothing's really different. Like it didn't change anything at all. Then Ron comes into the scene and he's married to Padma. And it's like, great, we've got ourselves in a little bit of a sticky situation here. I freaked out when Harry was talking to Minerva and he's talking about how they need to track Albus and just keep an eye on him. And Minerva's like, yo boy, I think you're making a mistake here. And Harry's just like, yo girl, you don't have any kids and I was just like you did not just say that to Minerva you did not just go there you did what are you doing Harry frickin Potter I can't believe you insulted Professor McGonagall who are you so the boys go back in time again because they're just making really dumb decisions throughout this book and after they come back from embarrassing Cedric in one of the competitions the world has completely changed and it was so interesting seeing that seeing how dark the world would have been if things would have gone differently we've got Dolores Umbridge in the picture again and she's the headmistress of Hogwarts. We learn how the mudbloods are kept in dungeons and you constantly hear them screaming and it's terrifying and Snape is alive and we learn that Cedric Diggory is alive and he is now a Death Eater and he killed Neville Longbottom. Just uh-oh SpaghettiO. The boys have just screwed up the world and then when they fix it all what do you know? Delphi is the child of Voldemort and is here to screw things up even more. I just... Why? 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 I mean, I knew that something was up with her, but I didn't think that this was going to be it. I thought that that was just going to be a rumor throughout this whole story and that it was just going to stay a rumor. 
But no, it wasn't a rumor at all. I just still can't wrap my mind around the fact that Voldemort and Bellatrix got together and had a child. Like, I just can't. It was interesting how in the end, like, Harry, Ron, Draco, Hermione, Ginny, the boys, Albus and Scorpius were like, in a sense, protecting Voldemort from Delphi. It's crazy how the tables kind of turned. Either way, that's all I really have to say about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. You guys should let me know down below what you thought about this book. What was the moment where you were just like, say what? Did that really just happen? It did just happen. For me, it was probably just Harry Potter telling his child that he wished he wasn't his father. Hands down for me, that was like the biggest what the crap moment. <laughs> but you should let me know down below what moment shocked you the most. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so click subscribe if you want to be notified for when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, chew. Hey reader fam, today I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I am planning to read in the month of August.